Hey everybody, Ragnarok back here and I'm going to go over the second game in the World Open. Um, so the next few games I did end up winning. Uh, this game, um, it's funny because my first and last game I drew, um, they were actually the lowest and the second lowest rated or third lowest rated uh, people that I versed. Um, my other wins were against 1750s and 1770s or so. Uh, as you saw, my last game was a draw. Uh, I thought it was a pretty uh, boring, straightforward, uh, straightforward game, so check that out if you haven't already. Um, if you're interested, honestly, I think it was my least uh, interesting game of the, of this, uh, of the tournament. But uh, this game, I was playing white, and this guy was rated about 1530, 1550 or so, uh, but he played pretty good. Uh, he played the London system, so London system being d4, I usually respond trying to turn it into a King's India with knight to uh, f6. He went to knight c3, so this is where I automatically know that knight uh, bishop to f4 is coming. Generally, people will play c4 or eventually maybe knight to uh, c3 in normal uh, queen's openings, but this tells me that it's going to be the London system. And I actually played this incorrectly as opposed to what I think was a better way to play it in my ninth game, so uh, we'll look at that in, uh, I guess, in eight games or so. So I played uh, g6 just to turn it into a um, king's Indian. And then of course bishop f4 as I mentioned. And then I played d5 and I think the right move here is c5 um, just to directly challenge the center because if he ever takes and I go here this bishop becomes really really strong. The reason it doesn't have some play right away is because the d4 pawn is there. But if you can distract him right away uh, this bishop will eventually be strong. Now right away you could always win the pawn back if you'd like um, by doing something like that although that does keep your queen in the middle of the board. I think maybe just kind of like keep that pawn there for a little while. Maybe just develop first to prevent his pawn from pushing uh, b4. But anyway, I think that's a better way to play. Uh, I think I play d5 just because sometimes I get caught up in what engines tell me to do without really thinking why. Uh, so I played d5 because I think I remembered it telling me that once. So e3 and then bishop to g7, c4. Um, now I don't really want to take because this is going to give him a stronger center. Although I do have some ways to attack it, it's a little tough for me to push e5 because he's got uh, three pieces defending it. And plus this is going to be really, uh, really good for him. Queen eventually comes here, attacking this pawn over here. Knight could eventually come out and then maybe the weakness on uh, c7. So I don't really want to take that pawn. So I played c6 and this kind of turns into a slavish kind of formation. And I think this is good because my pawns being on white squares... Um, my bishop is going to be pretty strong somewhere on one of these, uh, maybe not here, uh, on the f f5 square. And then my bishop eventually be, will be pretty good. Uh, that's the goal, anyway. Uh, knight c3, castle, um, and then queen putting an additional attacker on this pawn here. Uh, so let's see, he has uh, three attackers. I've got three defenders, so I'm good for now. The problem is his queen is preventing my bishop from developing to the square that I want. And then my c6 pawn is blocking my bishop from coming out. Uh, my knight. So I played a6 because I want to attack um, with b5 and try to take this pawn away from the center and that'll help maintain my control of the e4 square. So that's the goal I want to do and he kind of plays into it a little bit because he plays bishop e2 uh, so I immediately take, he takes back and then I can get my uh, my b pawn uh, pushed. Maybe a little bit better, um, could have been b5 now, let's see. Uh, if I do that and he takes here um, this might not be bad, uh, maybe. I get, you know, a decent pawn structure kind of blocking in the center like I want. Um, but I kind of chose to go here first um, when he takes and then I push. Because another thing I'm trying to do is let this bishop move, as I mentioned, uh, because the uh, b7 square was under attack by the queen. And then if he moves away, which he does in the game, um, I can then take control of this diagonal. Uh, it does limit me a little bit, but I can't really push this pawn right away anyway, so I figured that would be okay. But just a tactic I think he could have done was maybe take on f7. Um, pretty much have to take here, and then he comes in with his knight. Um, he'll win the piece back. He'll get a pawn and a rook. I'll have a, a knight and a bishop. And I think that would have been fine for me, because um, giving up a rook that's not active at all for two pieces that were active in the center um, seems to be better for me. Um, you know, who knows how, how it could have turned out because he didn't go with that. Uh, he actually didn't even consider this um, after the game, but I spent a few minutes thinking about what he would do if he did that. Uh, so he goes back to bishop e2, I go bishop e6, forcing his queen away, there's no way he can block it. 
Um, and then I go in the center, and I'm okay with this move because it forces him to trade. And like I said, um, I'm a little bit behind here because my pieces aren't really in the center. So if I can start trading and simplify things, it's going to be um, a better result for me, I think. So I force him to take, almost force, because I'm going to take his bishop and double his pawns. Um, and this is a strong bishop for him. It's outside of his pawn chain. And uh, I think I didn't want to take with bishop because then he can get this strong center. Um, and I don't know if he would push right away, but this is better for him. My pawns aren't really doing anything yet. So I thought maybe I'd take with the, uh, the C pawn. The problem with that is his queen's already on this file. His bishop's already attacking C7, um, and he can easily get his rook over here. Uh, so that's what he does, and it kind of puts me at a little bit of a disadvantage. So because of that, I try to start trading as much as possible. Um, if I can reduce the pieces that he has, then I think I'm in a better position um, just because I think these pawns are more advanced, I can start pushing on the on the queen side. Um, and I feel like I'm in a better position. So I start trying to trade because um, if he moves away, I'm just I'm controlling the C file, which is good. I can develop my knight, maybe my queen, get my rook over. Uh, that won't be bad at all for me. Uh, so he decides to um, trade, uh, allow me to trade, which allows him to double up his rooks, uh, which double attack on the on the C file plus his bishop. But, you know, in some cases, like the C file, it's open and it's worth controlling, but you can't always do anything with it, which you'll see in this game uh, for my opponent. So knight d7, just so I can develop, go here, maybe up, uh, oops, maybe go up here. Um, I may get trapped if he pushes b3, so if he ever pushes b5, like this is like a really, I think, good spot for me, because then I can control the C file as well, um, and then this will be a good spot for my knight to be. Um, he can't easily kick it away because his bishop is far away. So that would be really good <clears throat> if he ever played b5 uh, before. So he brings his rook in. Um, I'm just trying to trade, like I mentioned before. Trade as much as possible. Uh, oops, I accidentally did that backwards. Uh, I have this long notation because I did it wrong. Uh, the f pawn comes over, um, and then he trades. The reason this pawn has to, uh, this rook has to come over is because I have to defend uh, the a6 pawn. Now, if my rook weren't here, um, then this C file um, infiltration would be good for him because he can bring his rook like he does here, bring it back, attack here, push a4 to eventually have the bishop attack on the a6 uh, weakness. And then I'd have to like do something like this, which would be really passive and awful for me. So that's why I, I wanted him to have as little pieces as possible uh, for this. So he takes c7. I push f6 so that I can bring my king in here. Um, but ultimately to block the knight from coming in because I was a little nervous of potentially this move uh, because if he starts trading, he can win this pawn, which is weak and backwards. Um, so that's why I wanted to get rid of that. So I allow um, block the knight from coming. And I think at this point, uh, he played yeah, play h3 uh, just to give himself space for his bishop. But I think he probably should have started maneuvering his knight because if you take a look at the board real quick, there is one really good outpost for his knight. Um, and it's the c5 square. And good for him uh, because if he can maneuver, let's say I start wasting time over here, just a couple of moves later, like three moves and he's in here. I think this is good because he, sh he should be trying to attack this. Because I've created this weakness, he can bring his rook here and attack both of these at the same time. He always has a4 coming as a threat. And if I take, you know, this pawn hangs and then this pawn will eventually go away. Uh, so I think that would have been a better option for him but he played h3 and kept his knight on the king side, where it's not really doing too much. That gave me some chances to uh, get my king in, protect my bishop. Again, I'm worried about this at some point, um, so I needed to protect my bishop. Now he plays b3, I think this was another wasted move. And I think that the best way to describe how to improve chess games like this, where it's like nothing's really happening, is not always pawn moves. It's more so remaneuvering your pieces. So. Like I mentioned, the knight, I mean, now he's blocking his knight from coming in anywhere, really. Uh, if I do anything, like, where's his knight going to go? Uh, here, maybe? And then, you know, what's it going to do there? So try to think, like, where it would be good to be. So b3 was a good square for his knight to be. And his pawns were fine. The h3 is probably fine to give his bishop some breathing room if I ever push. You know, he has more than just g3. He can go to h7, uh, h2. So I think, just think about your, your pieces. So that's why I'm playing f uh, f6 so I can get my king in here um, so I can actually uh, start to move some pieces because right now my knight is pinned to this pawn so I had to protect that pawn um, so I'm just trying to make sure my pieces are more coordinated I'm not pushing pawns uh, just for the sake of pawns 
Um, and that's what I think the my opponent's mistake was. So he played b3. I play h5 because I want to prevent this pawn push. Um, and then as well as if these pieces start to move, I don't have to worry about this uh, backwards pawn over here. Um, that was kind of the thought behind that. And this can never really easily push. If it does, he's trading more pieces, opening it up, and kind of an even endgame. And I'm trying to get more space here. Uh, so he plays h4. Uh, uh, a similar another wasted move I think because now he can never push uh, g4 even once this knight moves uh, unless it moves back here which is out of the game that's the only way he can push g4 um, so yeah I think he's just three straight pawn moves where he should be remaneuvering his knight uh, and maybe now it's a little too late I don't know uh, so I just give my bishop some space I'm also eyeing this pawn over here um, and if he does eventually push it I can maybe come behind it and attack this pawn um, something like that is my plan um, ultimately, I really just didn't want to get trapped in here uh, by eventual pawn pushes. So his king comes over, uh, not the greatest move, um, should be doing something with his pieces. I'm working my king in, so now this bishop can move because it was protecting the knight before. And then now his knight starts to move. Um, I think it's a little too late though. I think maybe he's trying to push this, but my bishop and pawn are kind of protecting everything. So he's got to do uh, f3 and then e4, and it seems a little slow at this point. Now I'm threatening to come into e6 to attack both the bishop and the rook, again trading so I can create some more space. I'm also threatening to bring my rook over here, <clears throat> try to trade things off, give myself, um, you know, either control of the c file um, or just trade the rooks off because my rooks are really very defensive here. So he backs his piece up, I start to trade, um, and it's really four straight now because if he moves away he's losing a piece with uh, check, has to block with bishop, loses bishop. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe something like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I have to do something. So, like, I would still be up a piece, and this is just fine for me. So he has to trade. So my bishop takes, I'm defending this, so now a4 is not as strong as it was, because I just take, I'm defending my bishop, um, my a6 pawn still. Now I've got a bit of a target here, I guess, um, but I just want to open things up, so I go e5. Uh, the knight has moved away from defending, so now I've got enough defenders. He brings this knight back. Um, I think even still, like knight b3, this is an even better outpost now uh, because my knight is not attacking that square. Um, not only that, but if he goes here, he's got two attackers on the a6 pawn. Uh, his knight is annoying uh, in my grill here. I, I think that would be a good move, but he goes back to defend the pawn. <clears throat> um, I just defend the pawn a third time. He moves his bishop away, uh, and then I push because now, yes, I'm opening this bishop up, but I want to be able to move this knight as well as this bishop to get him in the game. So once the knight moves, I bring my bishop over here so I can attack his bishop as well as protect an a5 pawn push. Uh, he's attacking my pawn, so I have to defend it. And now this is, I think, the bigger one of the bigger mistakes of the game. Um, the knight, as we mentioned, didn't have many places to go. He took away the b3 square uh, again with his bishop this time, so his knight couldn't go there. But now um, a really good move here is my bishop to b4. Uh, because now I'm blocking all three of the squares that the knight can go to. Uh, it's never really good to have your knight back in the starting spot, especially late when I have this strong bishop controlling things. So now the biggest threat is, once he does this, to try to prevent me from pushing over here. Um, I guess it was a threat if he did something else random. Um, maybe I'd push. I mean, he doesn't have to take, though. I think this is fine, because if he does anything else, uh, I don't know, let's just say make a move. Um, if I take, like, this is fine for him. Um, I've got two weird pawns, you know, he doesn't have to take. So I think that's what he said he was worried about, which is why he went to, um, ah, skipped, skipped to the end. Oh, oh no. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, okay. So his knight comes back here. I block it. Um, he moves here and I push the pawn. Not only does that cause, um, my bishop to be way better than his, which is behind these, these two pawns over here. Um, but it allows the threat of, uh, of this here. So check, uh, if he goes away, I would win the knight uh, right away because the knight can't go anywhere right now. So that is the threat. So he has to worry about that. So he brings his king in. Uh, I check him anyway because I want to get my bishops essentially locking down these pieces so I can start attacking uh, these two pawns on the king side. Uh, he moves to the only square he can. I bring my knight in, uh, try to put some more pressure, maybe trade this knight for this bishop. Um, 
depending on the scenario. Uh, he comes in, check. Whoops. Check, he moves away. Um, now, I don't want to take this knight because the knight's not doing anything right now. Even if it comes forward, I could potentially take it. But the better move, I think, is to attack this pawn that can't go anywhere. Um, and if he brings his bishop back, I have my bishop here attacking this weak pawn. So um, that was my goal to pen penetrate over here. Now I see an opportunity to grab this bishop for a knight, which will be ultimately better for me in the endgame. Because, um, I mean, this bishop's not doing anything now, but there's no easy way for me to defend this pawn. Um, if I come back, I'm trading bishop for bishop, and I like the way my bishops are. So I force him to uh, exchange. If he moves away, I'm going to win the... Uh, Oops, uh, I'm going to win the knight. So he has to take because there's nowhere else he can go to defend this knight. So he takes. I take back. Now, there was a minute. Um, I was probably about uh, 10 minutes left at this point. There was a moment I was thinking of this. <clears throat> but with only a few minutes left to think in the game, I thought creating this pass pawn was too dangerous. Um, yes, I could win these pawns. Uh, but I think it's better just to leave the structure here the way it is. I just kind of work around it. <clears throat> so I decided to take back with the bishop. Um, if he wants to go in here, he can, but uh, he's going to lose some pawns over there and eventually the game, I think. So he defends the pawn. I attack his knight. And then we're... Um, this was still the 60-minute game, so it wasn't the game um, two hour to get up to 40 moves. So um, <clears throat> wasn't sure. I actually almost thought about taking the draw because I had low time. Uh, he was going back and forth, but instead I decide, uh, and by the way, the threat here, the reason why this is good for him, and I have to bring my bishop back, is because he's attacking this pawn. Um, I don't want to let that go, so I come back, he defends the pawn again, and then I decide to bring my king in. Uh, my king is one move away now from defending, so <clears throat> I can just bring my king here and then bring my bishop over. So he defends the pawn, um, I attack this other pawn, so again, I've got both under uh, under attack. And when he comes up here, now I can safely bring my king in to attack uh, the pawn. He brings his king up, I take the pawn, and he brings his knight in. And this is where I started thinking, like, maybe this knight will be really annoying if he starts coming over here and attacking these pawns. Um, but for whatever reason, I attack the knight, uh, threatening to take both of these pieces. Uh, he went to a7, which is a bit of a mistake, because the knight only has three squares. So I just block off the two escape squares. Knight has to come back. He was uh, under attack. And then now I don't want to take right away um, because if I take now and he takes, um, I can't win this pawn um, easily. And this could be a draw. I don't know. Maybe I'd start pushing some pawns over here or something. Uh, but I'm not sure. So the better way to go about this is first check. Uh, the king has to move away from that square. And now I can safely take because he's not in time to catch up with the pawn. Um, I don't have the rest of the notation here uh, because, like I said, I was low on time, but it was something like this. Um, and then I think he just started moving over here. Uh, yeah, eventually he moved this to like try to attack the pawn, and like the king can't really easily block everything. Eventually, uh, if we play out a few moves, uh, the main goal was to really just start taking these pawns. So I think he moved back. This is really just an annoying threat so that I can bring my king over here. And then I take the pawn. Either he takes, if he moves away, I mean, I'm winning these. And eventually, you know, I'm going to have a couple pass pawns. So that was the second game that I won. Um, I thought that was a really uh, good game because while I gave him control of the C file, he never really had enough resources to use it. And I think that was because of me trying to trade things away. Um, I do have another game I played against the London system. I'll go over on game nine uh, where I played a little bit different, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this and uh, I'll see you in my third match.